Hi everyone and welcome to The Better Half. I'm your host, Rachel Monick, and we have a great show ahead and some new ladies to meet. Let me introduce you to everyone here at the table. This is Heaven Daniels, wife of Mike Daniels. Lindsay Kuhn is here, wife of John Kuhn, the Packers fullback. Happy to be back. Extraordinaire. Oh. Thank you. Lovely wine. <laughs> <laughs> and for the first time, it's Kaylee Blakely. She is engaged to running back Mike Hill of the Packers practice squad. Welcome. Thank you. It's Thanks for having me. Great to have you. Um, and also, Amy and Rosie are in the kitchen. What's cooking, ladies? We are going to cook things up. Super excited to be cooking with Rosie, girlfriend of Drew Corliss. Uh, we are making a Jamaican dish, taking ordinary chicken and really making it extra special. So stick around some Caribbean cooking and one of my favorite side dishes too, uh, rice and peas coming up. Oh, we have been eating so well I this know. year on The Better Half. <laughs> Just you wait, oh, ladies. I cannot wait. Yep. <laughs> We've been eating so well. Now, a week ago, we were getting ready for the big game in Chicago. Some of the ladies planning to go, some stay at home and watch. What did you end up doing? I ended up staying because I've got two little ones, and it's a little bit harder to figure out traveling, but I did want to go. So, do you, How many games do you think you travel to so now far, that you have boys? So far, none. none. <laughs> <laughs> no. Too hard with kids, is it? It's a little bit harder, yeah. if it's a sitter and overnight, it's, you know, it's just a little bit more cumbersome. It's tough. You have to yep. be mom. Yep, mom yep. first. And, and cheer from home in front of the TV. <laughs> and what about you, Lindsay? Well, I typically stay home and watch it with my dog, Buckwheat, but um, <laughs> a bunch of the girls actually got together this time and we watched um, all together. So that's Oh, that's did. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. And you... You stayed here, right? Yeah. Well, Mike actually got um, player of the week, so he got to go to the game. So it was exciting, and um, a bunch of the girls got together, and we all watched the game. But I usually just stay at home. I'll maybe have a friend over and watch it. So Is it easier to watch when you're in the company of other um, wives and, and better halves <laughs> of the players, or is it tougher? Well, I'd say tougher because we're always talking and everyone right. wants to know what's going on. What are you doing this week? What are you doing next week? Um, so it's probably harder, but there's always seem to be multiple TVs on anyone's house that we go to. So there will be some quiet rooms and some more social rooms. But yeah, I'd be in the quiet rooms. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get really like tense during the game. So so in, in when you're uh, socializing, maybe you don't get as tense, but you miss some of the right. game. Yeah. And do you get tested on it later? Like, do the guys want to know if, <laughs> if you saw that amazing catch <laughs> or that tackle? Or I have gotten. What did you think about this block? And I'm thinking, mm, well, what did you think about your block? <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. What, what is player of the week? Um, I think it's someone who just did an outstanding job that week. And Fantastic. Yeah, he was really excited to go. And one of his best friends plays for the Bears, so he was really happy to go that week. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, speaking of being a mom, <laughs> you had an adventure with your boys this week. I've had, what happened? I've had a couple of adventures. So the first one, we I took my son to the bounce house, um, Sir Bounce a lot. He didn't even know this the big bounce houses and all these things. I told Michael, like, we need to go get some food. And instead of just walking next to me, he lays on the ground screaming. And it's not like a normal scream. It's like bloody murder, top of his lungs, shrieking. So I had to kind of like walk away. Like, I don't want people to think I'm doing something to him. And it's every day, it's this. Now Caden's my little one, he's one. He's doing the same thing. He's falling on the ground. He'll crawl really fast, sprawl out, scream top of his lungs. Oh. I'm like, what is going on over here? These boys do not have tantrums. Look at how cute they oh, are. Oh, they have tantrums. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's getting out of control. So what do you do as a mom in that situation? You know what? I'm just trying to focus on getting Michael to respond better and listen well. So we're doing a lot of timeouts, um, you know, kind of removing some of his privileges. Don't want to overdo it. He's only three, but I do I, want him to listen. I get very embarrassed because I'm afraid that somebody might recognize me <laughs> oh. and then go on Facebook or Twitter and yeah. say, I saw Rachel Monick and her <laughs> kids were misbehaving and she did this. So I know it's tough. But as bystanders to that, I, I always get embarrassed as well for the parent, and I just try to act casual, keep going, don't look, because I don't want them to think that, you know, get more uncomfortable than they probably already are. It, it's, it's uncomfortable. Well, I know someone saw because she told me, um, <laughs> we've recognized her, we've gone there so often. She's like, yeah, I saw Michael laying on the ground. I had a little friendly conversation oh. with him. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, I mean. Well, Mike has nieces and nephews, and his nephew always does, and I always try just being really calm and trying to calm them down. Because so. if you get worked up, too, sometimes they get a little yeah. more worked up. Mm -hmm. Well, we want to get to know you, Kaylee, yeah. a little bit. Tell us a little bit about yourself um, and meeting Michael. Well, Michael's my fiance. He's number 22, and we're actually from the same hometown, St. Joseph, Missouri. And that's, yeah, that's a picture when we got engaged. Um, he was texting me and was like, can you come help me fill out paperwork? And I was like, okay. <laughs> and um, it was at, we're, that's when we were home, and it was at um, his college, Missouri Western. 
So he was like talking to me and I knew something was going to happen because he was acting really nervous and like he proposed over on the field like Aww. above the stadium. So it was very laid back, but that's kind of how we are. And that picture is on New Year's Eve. It was really fun. There was a bunch of fireworks and you guys we had are a good looking couple. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Is that at Lambeau? Yeah, that was on family day. That was like so exciting and fun. I was actually still in St. Joe, so me, Mike's dad, and my younger sister drove up. Um, it takes like 10 hours from St. Joe, oh but we goodness. drove up for the weekend, and it was just a lot of fun. And that's the powder puff game, which I'm doing again this year. Oh, you year. are going to do it this yeah. year? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's this really month, fun. right? Yeah. It's You're playing this year? I'm not able to this year. You're not? Okay. No. But you did last year. I did last year, and it was yeah. so much fun. Oh, yeah, it was. It was. Last year. Yeah. We'll be sure to talk about it coming up on another episode. You'll have to join us again for that yeah. show and tell us about the powder puff. Well, welcome again. It's so Thank nice you. for you to be a part of it and share your pictures with yeah. us. Those are great. Well, we have a lot more coming up. Linebacker Clay Matthews isn't the only one in his, in his family to play pro football. We're going to talk to his sister. She is here today. Jennifer is here to talk about what it's like to be part of an NFL family dynasty. So that's going to be a good conversation. And of course, we've got to get to the food. Amy? Yeah, ladies, hope you're hungry. Um, I'm in the kitchen with Rosie and uh, Drew, her better half, loves Caribbean cooking. Uh, we are going to do some. We're making a chicken curry dish that you can make too. So stay with us. Lots of great recipes and food and more with the ladies. Coming up next, you're watching The Better Half. Welcome back to The Better Half. What's it like to have a brother on a list of the sexiest men in the NFL? Well, <laughs> we're about to find out. Clay Matthews' sister Jennifer is here today. She comes from a family of NFL players, and now she's making a name for herself in the NFL world, and we'll explain that coming up. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. So what is it like? Oh, <laughs> it's really funny. I get asked that question a lot, and I. It's funny because to me, he's just little Clay. He's like my little brother. Yeah. So it's hard to look at him like that. But I've I've gotten quite used to women like approaching me on the street and stuff and being like, "I love your brother," and I'm always like, "Oh gosh." Like, you know, it's I know. Still, what do you say? Right? Yeah. I. I just smile and go, "Oh gosh," and then I, you know, and then I tell Clay, and he's funny. He's really humble. He always just kind of shakes his head and go. Oh. Anyways, and I bet they're women of all ages. Oh yeah, I get everyone from like teenage girls yeah. to like you know women in their 80s who are like, "He's just the cutest little thing." <laughs> like, I know because my sister, my sister loves Clay. Like all the time when, when she comes to visit. She'd be like, can you get a picture of Clay? Can we, can, can we see Clay? Can we see? I was like, Jada, no, we can't see <laughs> yeah. him. You know, as far as seeing him on the field. She's like, I just like it when he splashed the water in. <laughs> <laughs> His whole hair thing, it's like a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. Hair. I give him a hard time about that. But. And then when they do the slow-mo of the oh, hair. Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> I know. It's some, yeah, it becomes like this corny, like very dramatic There's thing. There's one where his hair is blowing and it's like gone with the wind fabulous. And I think it's hilarious, like the new memes that are out. So it's pretty famous. Yeah. Well, and then to think he's not the only one in your family in the NFL. Right. How many members of your family? So we have seven. So my oh. grandfather played for the Niners in the 50s. My dad played for the Browns and the Falcons. My uncle played for the Oilers and the Titans. Clay's obviously on the Packers. And then Casey, my youngest brother, is on the Eagles. I have a cousin on the Panthers. Uh, Kevin, and then my cousin Jake just got drafted to the Falcons. So how, do you keep, wow. <laughs> yeah. how do you keep up with all that? Yeah. Oh, we do have a picture. Is that your dad? Yes, that was when my dad was playing for the Falcons. Oh, I'm rocking the overalls. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was, uh, that was at the Georgia Dome. That was one of his last few years he played with the Falcons. Yeah, and there's the five of us. So was it kind wow. of expected that the boys would play football? And Not necessarily. It's funny. Everyone always thinks, like, there must be so much pressure. And, mm -hmm. But my dad was very no pressure whatsoever on the boys. He very much was like, whatever you want to do, I support. And if anything, we played soccer for a while, and my mom was like, you know, the fewer years my kids can take hits, like, the better. Right. And so we, the boys actually didn't start playing until a little bit later. But once they did, they kind of fell in love with it, and the rest is history. But not, my dad, yeah, no pressure whatsoever. <laughs> What's it like for you on a Sunday when there's a lot of games you need to be yeah. watching? <laughs> well, I know it's difficult yeah. to keep up. I'm, like, multi multitasking. So if I'm at one of the games and I just check my phone for the other okay. scores, but then if I'm at home, I try to have like multiple TVs so I can keep tabs on everyone. And I can't, you know, I can't imagine the anxiety because I know how I feel just with yeah. Mike. You know, yes. so for you, it's got to be super intense. It is. You get it. I mean, you watch yeah. games from a different perspective as a family right. member, mm -hmm. and um, you know, there's a certain element of nervousness about their safety and. 
whether they're going to be okay. And with so mm -hmm. many family members mm -hmm. out there, it's always like, if everyone's healthy and, you <laughs> yeah, know, that's, that's all, first and foremost. Day, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we have another picture that we're going to see from your family, but uh, what was it like for you being the only girl in the family? Oh, goodness. <laughs> I can hold my own. I mean, I'm the oldest and the only girl. So with those four boys and they're rowdy, they are like all boy of and course. they still are. <laughs> so I had to learn to be tough and hold my own. You can't be uber sensitive in our family because it's like just, you know, the, the insults yeah. and the joking, it kind of, it just comes with the territory. <laughs> yeah. so, What's this no. picture from? Oh, okay. That is when uh, Clay was playing at USC and Casey was playing at Oregon and they got to play each other. That was on the field at the Coliseum. So that, that was always special um, when they got to play each other in college. And now they've actually, they played each other last year. The Eagles played up here at the Packers and they're mm -hmm. as well uh, this, this year, year. Mm -hmm. again. Yeah, and actually uh, in December on Monday Night Football, my cousin Jake and the Falcons will come up to play. So that should be fun because Clay and Jake will literally get to go up against oh, each other. Wow. Yeah, so it's <laughs> and, very special. And then at the Super Bowl in Dallas, everybody was there? Everybody was there. We were all dressed in our Clay jerseys. We mm -hmm. took a great Christmas card picture with all of us in front of the stadium and Clay literally was on the side of the building. So my mom put a little arrow like, here's Clay, <laughs> so we're all here. But no, it was a great, just such a fun experience. And that was the first Super Bowl for my entire family. It's like wow. we have this curse. Because my, yeah, my dad played 19 years, didn't go to a Super Bowl. My uncle played 19 years, went to one Super Bowl and they lost to the Rams. So then when Clay came and they won the Super Bowl, it was like, I wow. you know, it wasn't oh. just for him and the Packers. He was like, it's a for the family. family. Yeah, yeah, exactly. At least we got that so, one in there. Yes. That's awesome. Thankfully, that was a blessing. Well, I, I mentioned before that uh, Jennifer has also a role with the NFL, and it's um, being a spokesperson and model for the NFL apparel. And we're going to talk more in another segment coming up on The Better Half. But look at that. There she is modeling. She's been in the newspaper. She's been in fashion magazines. And we have so much more to talk about being stylish with your team spirit coming up. Thanks, Jennifer. Thank you. And now it's time to do a little cooking. Hi, ladies. Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, ladies. In the kitchen, I'm Amy Hanton, the cooking mom um, with Rosie. She is the better half of Andrew Corliss, tight end, and she's a fantastic cook. I've cooked with you before. Yeah. Uh, you, This is your passion. You love doing this. Yes, I love it. I enjoy and it. You call Andrew Drew, um, and he loves Caribbean cooking. Why yeah. is that? Well, his on his father's side, they're from Dominica. It's an island. People confuse it with Dominican Republic, but it's Dominica, and they have a mixture between um, Caribbean food like, and also Indian dishes. So it's a mixture, so I've learned to turn it up a notch. <laughs> I'm excited about this recipe. I, uh, my family and I, uh, we loved a vacation in Jamaica, and we love the, the cooking there. So this kind of reminds me of some of those great flavors. And the best part is it's just stuff you can do at home. Um, we're just taking chicken and kind of really turning it into something wonderful. So walk me through. Get me started. We're going to start with the onion, right, Rosie? Yes. We want to um, saute the onions. Okay. And so we've got uh, about a cup of pretty finely diced onion. Yes. Okay. And you like the pan pretty hot like that, right? Yes. Okay. Because it helps it saute quicker. So there's a few steps to this recipe because um, this chicken is going to kind of braise low and slow, yes. right? Yeah. But man, it's worth it. Lots of great flavors. If you can't get it to the Caribbean in the middle of winter, this would be a great dish to make. So let the onion hang out for what you say about five minutes? Yeah. Okay, and we're going to kind of move this along. So now we've got some chicken. Yeah. And what I say with the chicken is I tend to clean it with lemon. That's a so, great tip. I've never yeah, heard of that. It cleans out the chicken, just avoid any um, issues with, you know, getting sick or anything. So, so just take some lemon juice and kind of rub it around the chicken. Now, what kind of chicken are we using here? Well, I use the mixture of drums, thighs, and also uh, wings. And I just, you know, butchered them up. And so that way you can get the flavor of all different types. People have their own preference of what side of chicken they like. So you can use any type. Use but this, whatever. Yeah. So we're going to get the chicken in there with the onions, yes. right? Okay. And then... Um, and you kind of cut it into smaller pieces, yeah. which is really nice. It's going to brown up nicely that way. Bone in and skin on, though. Yeah. So this is kind of like when we're done eating it, we're kind of using our fingers and picking at it. And yes. Then, oh, that's how, I, that's how I like to eat. Yeah. All right. And you can choose whether to put the season in before or after, but I figure it goes in anyway, so you can just do it as you're going. Okay. You say you don't really even follow the recipe. You now kind of know it by yeah, heart. I just, and, I just, yeah. I just go along with the flow. <laughs> So get that chicken in there. Yes. Okay. Now, what then, next? We want to add the seasonings. Okay. I have uh, allspice and then a coriander. Okay. I'm going to do a little oil. Yeah. I can tell I need it. Just throw that in there. And this is the coriander. And these are really traditional Floridian seasonings. Oh, now, my gosh. Does it like smell good? I also like to use good. parsley. I like the mm. way it sticks to the chicken. Pretty color, too. Yes. 
Oh, that smells good. Now, I have a, a little tweak I do. I use a uh, sasson, which is um, made by Goya. It is more on the Hispanic side, but it is my recipe, so. <laughs> you can make it your own. Yes. So you'll find this kind of in the international aisle yeah, of the grocery store? Yeah, it's sort of like store. a seasoning salt. Okay. But it has its own um, kick to it, and they have different um, types if you want salt or no salt, and if you're using poultry versus seafood. Gorgeous color. Yeah. Really, really pretty. And then Here last comes but not the curry. least is the curry. Quite a bit of it, too. No yes. skimping on that. Well, this is a um, good curry. It has a mixture of different herbs. So, yeah. All curries are not created equal either. Yeah, they're so, not. They have different um, spices. Yeah, you might want to play around with that. Yeah. All right, so we, should we mix this around a little and bit? And then add some of the... Chopped garlic? Yes, chopped Oh, my garlic. gosh, if you could smell this at home. Yes. Wonderful fall dish, you know? Yeah. And then the scallions as well. Okay. So at home, let this cook for about how long? Um, we let that cook for about an hour to two hours, depending on, of course, your your stove top as well. Okay. And then what I also put in is um, Scotch bonnet peppers, and if they don't have that, we can substitute with jalapeno or or habanero. habanero. Yeah. yeah. Scotch bonnet is pepper you traditionally will find in the Caribbean. Yeah. Boy, let me tell you, they're little, but they pack a punch. Yeah. Uh, but they're hard to find around here unless you grow them. So, um, yes. you know. Just add some in there. Yeah. And then after that's cooking, that should uh, favor in the flavor. Okay. And you want to brown it. The reason why you want to do this before you add any uh, liquids to it is because it'll help seal in the flavor. And that's real important. Oh and my it fills in the it flavor. Smells. And that's why you notice it's getting brown. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, when do the potatoes come in? Um, the potatoes come in after you brown them. Okay. Then you can throw them in. As also with the thyme. Okay, so now you don't have to, you know, skin it. I mean, you know, peel just, it or just throw it in there. Just throw the whole the, the whole, whole stems yeah, right you in just there. Throw the whole stick You'll in fish there. them in there. Fish them out later. Yeah. So after you get the potatoes in there, um, add, you throw some water in. Yeah, it's simple. You just add water after the potatoes. Okay. And then you just cover it up, and it does its own thing. <laughs> so let it stew on the stove top, or, yes. or do you ever finish it in the oven? Um, you can do it in the oven. I actually buy um, some Dutch oven pots. And we've got some right here. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. I'm so excited about I this I find recipe. them very versatile, you know, versatile. Like you can bake with it. You can even put it on the stove. So whatever works for you, I say do it. I agree. Here it is, the finished product. Yes. Looks amazing. And you like to serve this with rice and peas, yes. which is a traditional um, Caribbean side dish, which is one of my all-time favorites. You're actually going to show us, I've never made rice and peas um, until I went to Jamaica recently, and I learned from a, a Jamaica m m you know, mom how to make it, um, but it is, it's wonderful. It's definitely different, but it's, it's so good. It's worth it oh, trying. This looks fantastic with the rice and peas. So Rosie's not going anywhere. No. Uh, she's going to stick around and we're going to make the rice and peas recipe. And coming up, we're going to actually talk about some great fall decorating with pumpkins. So don't go anywhere. You're watching The Better Half. Stay with us. The Better Half is presented statewide by Quick Trip. Text HALF to 75309 to register to win VIP tickets to the Better Half Ladies Luncheon. Message and data rates may apply. The Better Half is about food. The Better Half is about fashion. The Better Half is about family. The Better Half is about fun. And the Better Half is about you. Win a chance to join your favorite Better Half hosts at an exclusive ladies luncheon. Text the letters H-A-L-F to 75309 for a chance to win and join us at the Better Half Ladies Luncheon. You can bring your better half and maybe they'll bring theirs. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome back to The Better Half. We're doing a little fall decorating with pumpkins. If you're like heaven, you've been there, done that. You've already bought the pumpkins and you've decorated. Nicole Campbell from Petal Pusher in Green Bay is here to help the rest of us because this will be a great weekend to get out there and buy the pumpkins. Perfect. Hi, Nicole. Hi. This looks festive. Yes. It's, it looks kind of elegant, too, don't yes, you think? Exactly. So what are we doing today? We're doing a more sophisticated and elegant <laughs> spin on pumpkins. This is not your typical jack-o'-lantern. Um, this is something, and it's easy to do, and it doesn't involve car because I don't know about you, but I don't like pumpkin guts. Oh. It's gooey, it's I, messy. I, I make my husband do it with the kids because I don't like it either. And yeah. where did you get this idea? The inspiration came to someone in a dream. I dreamt about it. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I'm not making that up. I woke up and I said, I just had a dream about succulents and pumpkins and combining the two. I don't know how to do it, so I called up Nicole. Wow. And, and voila. So why don't you get us started? 
Well, so what we're doing here is we're leaving our pumpkins completely intact, and that's great too because it helps the pumpkins last longer. You know, yeah. the more you cut it up, the quicker it disintegrates. Right. So what we're using are pins. You okay. have two different kinds. We have the little sparkling diamante pins, and then we have these that are called greening pins, which are essentially like a floral bobby pin, okay. more or less. So what we're going to do is we're going to use those to attach. The greening pins are used to attach the foliage. This is seeded eucalyptus. Mm. Is that what smells so good? Yes. Okay. It has kind of a fresh mm -hmm. fragrance to it. That and the curry. Yes. That. <laughs> so you're going to use this to drape over and then just use your little greening pin to hold it in place, just like you would use a bobby pin in your hair. You're yeah. going to poke right into the pumpkin. Oh, heaven, you're going to be excellent at this. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, that's good. Good. Yeah, super easy. And then you're going to take succulents and use your pretty little diamante pins that's to pin great. right into the succulent on top into the pumpkin. And I love those because those look like little dew drops in between the little succulent oh. leaves. Yeah, you can't go wrong with bullying. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Now, how long will the succulent last? The succulent will last like this for months, oh, literally. Wow. Succulents, as you have them, and you guys can keep building and adding to these, it's really your own creation. Okay. But succulents are plants that we often have outside in the summer at this time, you know, through our summer months, but you can't let them out there over winter, at least not most varieties. So what I did is I actually beheaded all of my little oh. succulents <laughs> from my pot for us, brought them in, and what's going to be great about them is you're going to use them on top of the succulents, and what this, or on top of the pumpkins, what this causes a succulent to do is form what's called aerial roots. So if you look at the bottom of this one, you can see these little fuzzy guys here. Over the course of months, it'll start to grow those. Your pumpkin may not last as long as the succulents, but then you can put these on top of a well-draining soil mixture, something like cacti, and they will actually grow as house plants. Oh, wow. So mm -hmm. you, can, you can take them off the pumpkin when you're done and, and exactly. grow them? Exactly. Exactly. Ooh. And then put them outside in your pots again come next spring. So then it will look like this? Yep. These are succulents that I've been growing at my house throughout the course of the spring and oh, summer. Wow. That That's I didn't behead. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so it's multi-purpose. It's multi-purpose. Like and that. you know, like some of my succulents that I have at home, I can't bring in because the pots are too big. So this is a great way to kind of continue propagating them, let them grow their little aerial roots, and then enjoy them through the winter as a houseplant. Oh awesome. my gosh, and then put them on your table for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. They might still be okay, right? Oh yeah, the succulents, if you were you Ooh, still have your succulents. purpley pink in there. <laughs> Yours looks good. I love, oh thank you. you. Can Yours in. too, Heaven. Oh, and you put some of the grass in there. I yeah, you use it. <laughs> you're doing it. great. <laughs> we also have here this beautiful bear grass that Heaven started to use. And you can make I, yeah. that into knots that? and loops. Ooh, so I'm going to take some cool. of this, okay. loop it over in my hands, and then grab our little bobby pin of sorts and use that to hold it in place into the pumpkin. Oh, I love oh. the height. Like yeah, it gives here. so much dimension yes. to things. Well, th what do you think, Kaylee? I think they're really cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier than I thought that it would look at first. Yeah. Oh, Looking yeah. at those, I thought, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But this is actually super easy. Mm -hmm. All right. And you? I love it. Uh, yes, yeah. I knew that you would love it. I knew you would. <laughs> Nicole Campbell, again, from Petal Pusher in Green Bay. She has some great ideas. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Lindsay is busy now working on her pumpkin, but she has been busy putting together a gala called Touchdowns for Hope. Some of the better halves were there. As you can see, John and Lindsay Kuhn and their Touchdowns for Hope gala. The details coming up on the better half. One week ago today, Lindsay Kuhn and her husband John hosted a gala for Green Bay's House of Hope. It was quite a night. It was wasn't so it? much fun. Yeah. Yep. And before we get talking about that, I wanted to welcome back to the show <laughs> Tay and Tavius O'Neill is here, Josh Boyd's better half, and we're happy to have you back Thank today. Thank you. Glad to be back. Now I know you weren't able to make it to the gala, and you were there last year, yep, so you know year. what it's all about. But what a night! So much fun, and we did. We raised so much money for such a wonderful cause. It was just. It was so special. Now. Um, you invite some of the Packer players. We do. John, you know, goes around and, and asks some of the guys to step up and, yes. and help out. And boy, did they show up. We really had so much support. Um, we had tons of wives and husbands, and it's just so nice. They have a full day. I mean, everyone there has a full work day, and the guys have a full practice day. And for them to come out and support, it, it's just, it's really touching. There's you and John. You, you were greeting everybody. I mean, that's a long night for you, greeting all your guests. You know what? It feels like a wedding. It, you're just so <laughs> excited, and there's so many the people there to say hi. Yep. yep. AJ and are there. We just, I mean, it flies by. It really does. There's so much preparation that goes into this, and then it's over before you know it. 
Uh, we saw Josh Sitton. We saw Matt Flynn and his wife Lacey were yeah. there. Jordy uh, and Emily. Jordy and Emily. I mean, it was a lot of fun, a lot of star power. Uh, former Packers player William Henderson was the uh, auctioneer. Yes. I got to job. help MC, which was <laughs> yes. super yes. fun, uh, standing next to William Henderson. I don't mind that. But And, and you, we're looking at a lot of the items that were auctioned off. We had a lot of different unique things this year, and they just flew. It was, I mean, it was a successful year for sure. What's it like for all of you to get gussied up and go help one of the other um, couples in their um, charity? Of well, I was going to say that's a well, that's a fun part. Not that it's all about dressing up, but you really have a reason to get really glamorous yeah. here. So that's fun in itself. And then, like you said, it's a pretty good, good cause. Last year, my favorite part was hearing the stories of the women like, from the House of Hope get on stage. And I mean, everyone was crying. I was bawling. Um, oh, I think for really me, that makes it. You know why you're there. You know it's real, yeah, but yeah. to be there and see them speaking mm -hmm. and just hear their story is really powerful. Mm -hmm. So sure. what is the House of Hope? The House of Hope is a shelter for young women either with children or expecting between the ages of 18 and 24. Um, and it's really the, the whole idea is to help them get back on their feet and rejoin community. So it might um, entertain getting, um, finishing their education. Some of them might come in with an addiction they need help breaking away from. Um, there's medical uh, care there for children themselves, helping them find jobs, find how housing, tons and tons of things that go into this, awesome. um, but really just trying to get them better, stronger parents and members of the community. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, like uh, Heaven said, last year they were part of the gala and they told their story and that really helps get the crowd motivated it too. It was. And, and this year, you know, we had asked them to do the same, but I think some of the girls were just too nervous and I, I was mm -hmm. so surprised last year when they were able to get up there and I mean, that's a really vulnerable spot to say, listen, mm -hmm. this is where I'm at and these are the troubles that I've had, but thank you so much for helping me. This is what you, this is why you're here and this is where you know I'm getting the strength to move on and take care of my child and take care of myself and it was just it yeah. is it's really I touching. appreciated that personally you know mm -hmm. and I think it was very cool that you guys they were able to get dressed up they didn't get their hair done and their makeup done so yeah. you know they felt glamorous for a night as well and not focus on their situations for that moment Just speaking about it I hate that I missed it it's not like it was oh, a there's nice always next year, year. Oh, yeah. I know yeah, I'll I definitely know. be there next year and you can't miss but Rachel Michelle and Will <laughs> that combination they did not leave a penny on the table and they are so <laughs> funny the timing I mean there was a lot of comedy and entertainment in that whole process it's not yeah. just about bidding it's about the comedy that the three of you provide oh, was well, outstanding well. Yeah. <laughs> it was fun and then it was fun. it's fun to watch the players and their wives in another situation too besides football yeah. or you know I see you all on the show but to be a part of a night out mm -hmm. was really fun and there's so many people from the community who come out too and I think part of it is they want to spend money and they want to help out the house of hope but they also want to rub elbows with with some of our celebrities yeah, here in it's Green a Bay. fun different kind of interaction for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how does jo I, just talk a little bit about your husband sure. and, and his uh, ability to get up and speak in front of a crowd? Way better than mine. I mean, <laughs> I get up there and I have all these things to say and I come out with one sentence. He gets up there, he remembers everything. I mean, it just, I, I'm impressed with him. He he's quite charming. Time. Well, thank you. I think he's a very good host and, you know, he, he's, uh, you guys are wonderful to host such an event. And mm -hmm. yeah, we did get to hear one woman's story. And a see video of her and her daughter, and now yeah. she's expecting again. That's so awesome. And that was very touching. You both would have loved that. So yeah. don't miss it next year. No, I'm a touchy person anyway. So I'll <laughs> oh, oh you're, you'll cry. You'll cry. <laughs> so all in all, it was a successful event was, again this yeah, year? We raised more money than last year. And um, I believe that the, the goal for this year was to open more rooms because there is a waiting list. So last year we used the money to open more rooms, and I believe this year they'll be doing the same thing. It's Great. like $100 a, a day. day per room. Yes. To keep it going, mm -hmm. so yeah. that's a lot. Um, and I know you took this over from the Jennings. We did, Greg and Nicole Jennings. And do you plan to do it again next year? We do. I still have us back. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we're happy to help. Absolutely. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll all be there too. Yep. Right. Thanks, Lindsay. Yeah. It was such a great night. So much fun. Still to come, get out your green and gold. We are talking fashion with Jennifer Matthews. This is the way to wear your NFL apparel. We'll be right back. You're watching the Better Half. The Green and Gold Pet of the Week is sponsored by the Wisconsin Veterinary Medical Association, where we help animals through people. The Better Half, presented by Quick Trip, is brought to you in part by Goodwill, the Wisconsin Veterinary Medical Association, and by Johnsonville Sausage, served with pride since 1945. Each week on The Better Half, we have our Pet of the Week contest. We highlight a pet during the show. And if your pet is picked as this week's winner, the week's winner, you will win a $50 gift certificate to a local veterinarian in your community. And we have some cute pics to share once again. This is Casper. 
Oh, oh super oh, cute. Oh, Perhaps a little tuckered out. <laughs> Thanks to Shelly for submitting this picture. Next we have Vinny. <laughs> Vinny is a therapy cat. Vinny's ready to rumble in a Packers jersey and nail caps in Packers color. Oh, look at those nails, too. That, awesome nice. that is so funny. And then there's our winner of the week. Check out these three. Can you see them? Quite the trio. <laughs> Kelly says the Meyer Trio loves Green Bay. Now you can submit photos through the Better Half Facebook page, Twitter page, or email. Pet of the week at thebetterhalf.tv to the right vet to find the right vet for your pet. Go to wvma.org and click on resources to find a WVMA member veterinarian near you. And now, and the pets looked great. We have to look great too, right, as Packers fans. Jennifer Matthews is joining us again. Clay Matthews' sister is now part of the NFL family as well. And um, tell us what you've been doing this yeah. th the last few months working with NFL Apparel. Yeah, so the NFL selected me to be part of the apparel campaign. So we shot in New York and Harlem, and then we it was released in all the magazines last month. And then I've kind of just been on a little whirlwind tour here. and. <laughs> Uh, well, we were looking at some of the images from the magazines, and celebrities have been part of it, too. Um, yeah. yeah, how did that all come about? Um, I was contacted by the NFL, and they wanted to know if I wanted to be a part of it. And I had, I had known I was familiar with the campaign, so I was overjoyed that they selected me. So it was Jordan Sparks, um, Jessica Zor, Charlotte Jones-Anderson, who's Jerry Jones' daughter, uh, Aaron Heatherton, who's a supermodel, myself, and a few other people. So and it was to, really fun. And to open up one of those fashion magazines and see yourself? <laughs> it was kind of strange. I actually didn't know when it first came out, and a girlfriend of mine was reading Glamour and like sent me a picture, and she's like, hey, I know you. And I was, <laughs> So it was fun. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. All right, and then um, we have some red carpet pictures, I think, too. Yeah. I, are you wearing the outfit in... I am. I shouldn't be repeating here, huh? It's just like a fashion no-no. I don't know. Look at that. You're yeah. so glamorous. Thank you. Yeah, so that was uh, at the red carpet for the event, the launch event we did in New York. And those were other mannequins that we were styled by Philip Block, who's a famous celebrity stylist. So that was fun to work with him. And he was, it was just fun to watch him pair the casual pieces with some of the dressier pieces. Oh, there's Jordan and I. Yeah, she's super sweet. When her dad played for the Cardinals, so there was that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and she just happens to be an American Idol. Right. For those who don't no big remember. deal. No, one knows. no big deal. Yeah. It was very fun. And that's me uh, in the gallery where I found my picture hanging. So. Well, today I was dressed by Deb Kuhn, store manager of the Packers Pro Shop. Thank you so much, Deb, for You're being here welcome. today. And she brought a lot of other ways uh, for us to be stylish on game day. And I, I, I can't compete with Jennifer. But you can help us out, right? <laughs> yeah, that's totally. It's perfect. <laughs> Well, I think, you know, when, when it's happening in fashion, it's happening in the NFL, and it's happening at the Packers Pro Shop. So uh, we just brought some of the trends, things that are trending. They're, you know, foil tops. A lot yeah. of the ladies here yeah. like those very, very much. Okay, I have a favorite. Yeah. This one with the, would you call that foil? Mm -hmm. foil Gold the foil, foil printing. Yeah. It's it perfect for fall. And, and then nice you can put your hands in there. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And this one over here, too, I... I I like that. Yeah, every year the NFL comes out with a third jersey, and this year it's a platinum collection. Okay. I like so that. with ah. the silver lettering. Okay, and uh, who likes the boots? I say, those are my personal <laughs> favorite. Are the I best. Yeah, <laughs> I would totally wear those. Why do you like these, Heaven? Well, because they have fur and they have blink. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. It's a perfect They've been a bestseller, so you have a good choice. I gotta come over there. Absolutely. Rosie I'm picked out. out the bag. She did. Yep, she wants <laughs> one of those. I, will, I want these leggings. Yeah, you will be wearing those, right? Yeah, yeah. You could wear them with the boots. You could wear them with casual sweatshirt. Yeah. And Kaylee, do you have a favorite? I love the boots. I actually <laughs> saw them and I wanted them really bad. So. I bet they come in more than one size, so <laughs> yeah. I think you'll be okay. Uh, Jennifer, I was reading a little bit about uh, what you've been doing with the NFL and just talking to women about going to game day and being in style where yeah. you can have one of your favorite skirts, but it can still be part of game day right. wear. Yeah, there are, I think the good thing about the NFL apparel, well, when you look at when you look at women now, we make up over 45% of the fan base for the NFL, which is huge. I think the NFL and other people are realizing what a powerful part of the fan base we are. So now it's fun because there are so many options. So you can wear the casual, like I said, you could put leggings with like a casual hoodie and boots, or you could dress up, you know, you could put a t-shirt with a skirt. You could, I mean, there are so many options. And I think now for different body types, different ages, 
casual, dressy, the options seem to be pretty limitless. At this point. Well, there's always the cheese bra, too, that shows up. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot that today. <laughs> no. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's always a part of game day at Lambeau Field. We're not talking about that today, but it is part of Lambeau style. Deb, thank you so much for being here. You, you can find all of this stuff at the Packers Pro Shop at Lambeau Field. Coming up, we're heading into the kitchen. Rosie's Rice and Peas up next. You're watching The Better Half. If you like to shop, then come on, who doesn't <laughs> at least a little bit like to shop? Why not shop and help out a good cause? So Goodwill and Bonton have come together. Um, they're doing a Goodwill sale, which runs through October 4th. This year, the sale will be celebrating its 20th year. Every item that is donated to the Boston store, Yonkers, or any Goodwill um, and donation center, customers receive um, a coupon that can be used at Boston stores as well as Yonkers. The donations that Goodwill receives help fund training Sorry, fun training programs focused on getting people work and jobs. It's a really win-win opportunity for everyone involved. The Goodwill sale at Bonton generated 2.5 million of donations national, nationwide in the spring of this year, and the goal for this fall is 3.5 million of clothes and home textiles visit. Um, check out AmazingGoodwill.com to learn about more local Goodwill opportunities and more about the Goodwill sale. And now it's time for some more food. Rosie and Amy are in the kitchen making another family favorite. It's rice and peas, and we can't wait. I can't either. Thanks, ladies. Amy Hanton, the cooking mom in the kitchen with Rosie. Um, and your better half, Andrew, uh, loves, well, comes from a small island in the Caribbean. Yes. So he likes it when you cook some of his favorites, yes, right? Yes. So we did this wonderful curry chicken dish earlier. And the perfect side for this is a side dish called rice and peas. And if you ever go to the Caribbean, you will, uh, this is kind of their go-to. You're going to find it um, just about anything Everywhere. they serve <laughs> comes with rice and peas and I could eat it every night yeah. and I would uh, then you come back home and you're like how do you make it it's a very simple recipe it yes. really is yes. um, but it's got such great flavor and it's actually very healthy yes it is um, I find it very um, quick to make but some people are intimidated by just the name itself but it's really healthy um, first we start by um, the water. Boiling we some boil water. It. So, and this makes a nice big batch. It's very, one of the reasons I think it's a go-to down in the Caribbean yes. is it's really affordable. It's really yes. inexpensive. So yes. it's great for a family too. You can do the, the chicken that we made earlier yes. and then do this or do any type of. But uh, I, I also want to mention that with the items, there's always substitutes. So if you can't find something that you're looking for that the recipe says, you can just go ahead and find a certain item similar that works for you. So, so it's always... The rice, the water's boiling. Yes. Didn't need to cut you off no, there. It's fine. And then, um, should we rinse? You always rinse. Yes, the rice? I rinse the, the the rice and then also crush my garlic. Okay. So then I'm adding the crushed garlic in there before I do the rice. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, so. you want to? I'll rinse the rice and you want to yes. crush. So you just you no know, garlic press in your household. Yeah. You just do it by hand. I, that's the yeah, way I roll that's too. That's it. It saves you time. Saves you dishes. I agree. <laughs> and half the clothes get stuck in there. So. Yes. So just a quick rinse. Just sometimes there's pebbles and things that you yes. don't want in that rice. Is this a certain kind of rice, Rosie? Um, yes. Yeah, so that's another thing. They say you can use long rice. I like to use extra long. Okay. Um, because I find it um it helps from getting too mushy. Okay. So I like extra long, but you can use long, whatever your preference is. Okay. Good point. That's a really good point. All right. So we got our garlic. Yes. And uh, do we? At what point do we throw that in? Okay. So I threw the garlic in. Garlic's in. Oh. Yes. That's what um, smells so good. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also, um, we have ginger. And if for some people, it's called ginger root. And it's a root you can get in the produce aisle. Um, the cool part is you can use this for a lot of things, even for tea. Um, but today we're going to use it for the coconut um, water. Now, what we do is we uh, like to peel it. Okay. Um, or, you know, try to yeah, go the like knife. this. Okay. So I tend to, if I'm on a, a certain time limit, I could just kind of scrape some off here. And then I use a grater. There's nothing like fresh ginger. Yes. This is a microplane, and as Rosie said, this is a big piece. Yes. But it's really reasonable, and it keeps in your fridge for quite a long time. I wrap it in plastic wrap, or you can actually even freeze it. So quite a bit of ginger, Rosie? Um, you can, it's based on your preference. Um, I, think, I think that's good enough. Okay. Um, we like to look, put a little bit more, but again, it's optional to each person. Okay. Um, ginger is... It's a root, but it's also, it can be very uh, strong sometimes, yes, depending true. on what you intend to make. I love um, it, though. It smells amazing. Yes, okay, and okay. this is the easy part. Just a little bit of um, salt, salt and pepper. Okay. All right. 
And then we just throw some of these in here, which and is the thyme. And again, you can get this in the produce aisle. Just throw it in yep, the bowl. I just, love the way you cook. Don't yeah, even just, just throw, throw it in. The more the merrier. Because we'll be able to fish it out later and it's just going to have great flavor. Yes, and then also what I want to do is the scallions. Mm -hmm. All you do is just give it a little crack, throw that in there, and then I add the rice okay. and the beans. Okay. Whichever way you prefer. They call it rice and peas, which is really funny in Jamaica or all over the Caribbean, but really uh, it's, it's rice and beans, kidney yes. beans. So you can do dry <laughs> beans that you've cooked or that make it easy and, and throw the canned beans yes. in. Um, and then also before I do that, I like to add what we use is called coconut milk. Now I do want to let you know, keep in mind, there is also a dairy coconut milk. So I prefer to use the unsweetened kind so it doesn't interfere with your um, flavor that you're intending to achieve. So it's a canned item. You can find it in the any, any grocery store. It, it, that is the key ingredient yes. to this and then, it's going to give it such good yes, flavor. Yes, and you don't even need to add any oil to your rice because it pretty much substitute that for you. So yeah. And you'll just get this hint of coconut yes. with it that is just amazing. So uh, Stir that up. Yeah, uh-huh. Just to break down the, the coconut. The okay, okay. Yeah. And then one pepper. What kind of pepper? Well, I would say they say scotch bonnet. Now, you can't find scotch bonnet many places, so what I would recommend is a habanero, or most people use jalapeno. So we, what you do is you just pop, pop that it in there. there. Cover and it, then, and the yep, beans. Add your beans there. And just like you'd cook normal rice, cover it until it, all the, the liquid kind of absorbs. How long does that take normally? I would say it takes about 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes, but again, it depends on the kind of rice you use. So that's why I use extra long. Oh my goodness yeah. gracious. This just brings me, makes me want to go uh, have, a, <laughs> have a Caribbean vacation. Here it is when it's done and you just kind of fluff it up with a fork. There's mm -hmm. a couple of forks in there. Yes. It's going to go perfectly um, served with the Caribbean curry chicken that we did earlier. And the ladies are here. They're lined up. They, we've been smelling this all morning long. You have to come oh, in here. Yeah. I know there's a few hungry people here. Oh, I know. Sure. We kind of made a mess, but we'll start serving this okay. up. Pretty excited about this. When's I'm very the, excited. When's the Caribbean party, Rosie? Oh, yeah, that's Rosie. a great <laughs> idea. I'll keep you posted. Okay. I'll keep you posted. Rosie likes to cook, so we can all go. There yes. you go. Thank I'll just keep you. serving Jennifer. her. Jennifer. And then we've got forks, so pesos. Good. Rosie Hoffman, you make this. This, um, I tend to make it probably like once or twice a week I aim for, but sometimes it's just like once a month. Well, we'll be over <laughs> Exactly. We'll be right back. Stay with us. The Better Half Beverage is sponsored by Quick Trip, home of Cafe Caruba Coffee and Nature's Touch. The Better Half is presented statewide by Quick Trip, now offering premium fresh meats. Quick Trip, big on fresh meat, low on price. The Better Half is about food. The Better Half is about fashion. The Better Half is about family. The Better Half is about fun. And the Better Half is about you. Win a chance to join your favorite Better Half hosts at an exclusive ladies' luncheon. Text the letters H-A-L-F to 75309 for a chance to win and join us at the Better Half Ladies' Luncheon. You can bring your Better Half, and maybe they'll bring theirs. Message and data rates may apply. It's our favorite part of the show. We get to eat. Yes. Chef Rosie yeah. never ceases to amaze. It's <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> Chef so good. Rosie. I <laughs> like that title. I understand she's got a few Italian recipes up Ooh, her sleeve, yes, so I we'd do. love to have you come do some mm, more of those. Thank you. I would love to be And by the way, um, the recipes that you can get them, um, uh, just go to the Facebook page, Better mm -hmm. Half GB. You'll find them right there. We'll put a yeah. link to where you can get those great recipes, the rice and peas and this great Caribbean chicken dish. And all the other recipes that we've shared <laughs> on the Better yeah. Half. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, look at how full the kitchen is today. We had so many uh, wonderful guests and great segments today. Heaven and Kaylee, welcome Thank to the show. You. Nice to have you. Tay, welcome back. Thank Rosie, you. of course, you're going to have to do some more cooking. Yeah. Yeah. She was nervous. She totally rocked it. <laughs> come to my kitchen anytime. And Lindsay, of course, thank, thank you, you for, for being back. back. Yes. And Jennifer Matthews. Thank you for having me. I want to come over here. <laughs> I want to eat everything. Yeah, I love you. Welcome to come back. And keep us all as stylish as possible. Okay. All right, we'll dig in, everybody. And we hope to see you next week on another episode of The Better Half.